Hello class and welcome to the wonderful world of language arts once again. I would just like to go over a few words as you read in your book. Do you know what the word acknowledge means? I know we're not doing quizzes, but let me quiz you for a minute. And you just say it out loud. Do you know what acknowledge means? Does it mean to admit to be true, to ignore, or to acquire wisdom? To admit to be true, to ignore, or to acquire wisdom? And how many of you said to admit to be true? Ding! You are correct. The next one is conceited. Conceited means, is it disrespectful, prideful, or disagreeable? Disrespectful, prideful, or disagreeable? And who said prideful? Ding! You are correct if you said prideful number, let's see, number three. Scarcely means, does it mean barely, doubtfully, or fully completed? Barely, doubtfully, or fully completed? Did you say barely? Ding! You are correct. Surge means to leak slowly, to rush forward, or to spill out. Which does surge mean? Did you say to rush forward? Ding! Surge means to rush forward. Emerge means, is it to leave, to vanish, or to come into view? Emerge, to leave, to vanish, or to come into view? Did you say to come into view? Ding! You are correct. Grimy means dirty, old, or grumpy. What does grimy mean? Did you say dirty? Ding! You are correct. Survey or survey. What does survey mean? Does it mean to walk around, to inspect carefully, or to measure? What does survey mean? To walk around, to inspect carefully, or to measure? Did you say inspect carefully? Ding! You are correct. Last one, a custodian. Is a custodian a janitor, a cook, or a teacher? What is custodian? Did you say a janitor? Ding! Raise your hand if you got a 100. You got every single one of those correct. Good job, and you've been listening and doing a super job. Now, I'd like to show you or ask you some questions from your reading from last time. So, question. How often did the Rebel family publish their newspaper? How often did the Rebel family publish their newspaper? And what did you say, Naomi? Naomi, what did you say, Chloe? What did you say, Alice? Did you say once a week? You are correct if you said once a week. Why was Melinda the only one whose name was not on the, mast, the masthead? Why was Melinda the only one not on the masthead? Her name wasn't. And what did you say, Logan? What did you say, Richard? What did you say, Michael? Yes. If you said that her father said she was too young or too young to help, you are correct. You ought to give yourself points every time you get one right, huh? Where were Melinda's parents and brothers when the flood came? Where were her parents and brothers when the flood came? Did you say... at the Highlands for a press club meeting. Did you say they were at that meeting? Something about a meeting? They were gone, they were at the meeting, you are correct. Why did Melinda decide she had to write the article about the flood? Why did she have to decide to write an article about the flood?
did you say she just felt that that was big news and it needed to be reported in the paper and since no one else in the family was there I need to explain a little bit on this question what she couldn't contact her father could she so she felt that she was responsible to write something like that no one was around and she had to write it, didn't she? How did Mr. Wooliver and Mr. Rebel show that they were proud of Melinda? How did they show they were proud of her? A little bit of a, a more than one word answer, so I'm pausing. Did you say that Mr. Wooliver wrote or put a byline on her article or that Mr. Rebel wrote an editorial about her and added her name to the masthead? Something like that. Now an editorial means they've written in the newspaper uh, a writing or a commenting about it and printed it in the newspaper honoring or in this case, honoring her or saying something good about her. Well, any of those would be a good answer or all of that would be an excellent answer, okay? Now, the next time you're gonna read this story, The President's Whiskers. This is a really good story, a really good story. So read it, read it. And if you look at this first part here, sometimes you just skip that if you read that, it tells a little bit about what the story is going to be talking about. Then go all the way to the end of that story. It's a really good story. And I like stories like this about real people who really lived. Okay. True story. And then there's some questions. Ask yourself that. And next time, I will ask you those questions to see if you got the answer. All right. Good job. All right, well, we're going to dive right into the next part of our lesson right now. Now, I want you to notice something in your penmanship book. When you flip through the front of your book, I've already said this before, but you see that paper I was telling you about before? You could tear it out, or you see the, you see the perforation there? You could, uh, you could bend it back even without tearing it out. See, there's the, there's the perforated part, and see, right there is also the perforated part. Let's see, almost too close. There we go. See that? And it, but it would cut off part of the letter. See, what you could do, see, I bent my, um, this part back, really far back, like that. And then you could get the paper in there better. And you could actually, if you look, I can see through the paper. Can you see through the paper there? You can see through the paper. And I wrote a few letters, B, C, and E. Those are the letters I want to look at today. Look at B, look at B. Up, down, up, around. Notice it touches there and goes in. It doesn't go through though. The part on capital B, I notice sometimes is making a nice loop. Sometimes there isn't one there. And then this part there, a little hook there. Lowercase b and making sure there's a hook there so it doesn't look like an L. And don't make that, don't make the hook too low where it also might look like an L. So there's B. There's C that goes like that. And then lowercase c where the dot is is where you start. Notice you curve up and around a little bit on that one. Sometimes, sometimes I see this where it's it looks like that. But it actually you want it to come up just a little, just a bit. Right. Then there's E down, up, around. And like that. Notice the shape. And then, of course, ease like that. So, do 
what I did was I traced it, traced it, but see how it's bigger than the, than the line? But then once I trace it, I have got a good flow of the correct letter. And then I started here, where you can see I started to, you can faintly see, uh, where I sized it down and said, hmm, can I do that all right? And then I'm just going to go like that, all right? I'm just going to go down like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with C, where that's big. But let's size it down and then do a row. Then E, okay, maybe I dip just barely below the line. You don't want to do that, right? Oh, human. So I say, hmm, if that happens, you know, she said, okay, I'll make the next one even better. Oh, and it's right on the line, isn't it? And I could go into the next letter. Maybe I wanted to start a sentence with the word elephant. Hmm? And I'll write the word elephant. Now, I don't ask you to turn these in, and we're not actually having tests or anything anymore on this, but go ahead and write it. I mean, it will only take a little bit of time to just write a row, you know, practicing, focus on these three letters. I like to take a couple letters and just focus on that. And um, maybe do a row of capital, of each of these capital, and then maybe pick a word and write a few words using those letters for practice. Maybe you could pick the one that maybe you know you mess up on sometimes or don't do as well as you'd like. And uh, pick that, do a super job, and look in the front here, see? Look in the front here and uh, look at the formation guide. Look at the numbers here that tell you the order to, to form the letters if there's one that you still don't do correctly sometimes and uh, you get in a rush and you go back to a bad habit where it's not actually correct, right? So do that. I think that capital E is one that I don't see that shape uh, always. So work on that one or capital B or any of these that may be different for different ones and do a fantastic job, the very best. So I'd like to take the remainder of the time in this video just um, reviewing language. Language, uh, our subject language, and I'm going to come down here so you can see this very carefully. Let's go on and talk about what does wait on mean? I'll come on this side. Wait on. Wait on and wait for means what? Wait on to serve. Wait for to stay. Wait for someone. Right? What about this one? Try and, try to. Do not say try and, say try to. I will try to do that, whatever it is. Off of or off. Off of is redundant. You don't say off of, just say off. Get off now. <laughs> and um, off is sufficient. Hopefully no one's getting angry with anyone, but anyway. Less, are y'all getting along? Less or fewer, less or fewer. You have a little brother or little sister. You're getting along. Uh, maybe you're the maybe you're the younger one. You're being good. Less cannot be counted. Fewer definite countable. Right. I have, like we said, less water in there than I did before because I took I took a drink. Right. But I have fewer of something that you can count. Fewer marbles in the jar, right? Fewer cookies because I ate one, right? But less oil. There's less oil in this recipe, right? Because you can't actually count them. Have, of. Have is a helping verb. Of. You don't say, I should have done that. No, I should have done that. I should have, no. 
I should have, okay? Uh, there were a hundred of the pieces in there, or whatever, the puzzle, whatever. Burst means to break. Burst, to break. Bust is a sculpture that includes the head and chest. All right, so burst, the balloon burst, like we said, the glass burst, or it broke, right? So don't say, I busted my finger. No, I hurt, I bruised, okay? It, it broke open, that can happen, it kind of broke open. Um, burst is how we would use that, uh, the different senses of using the word there. Between, between, you know, between is two people, among is more than two, so three or more. The girls shared the, shared something among themselves, whatever it is you're sharing, shared the responsibility, the children shared a responsibility among themselves, or if there's only two of you, the brother and sister shared it between themselves, okay? Beside and besides, there's no one here besides us. Or if he said, there's no one here beside me, right, right next to. Affect and effect. This is a more challenging one. Affect and, uh, and effect. Effect means to influence and effect is a result, okay? Ah, to influence, it had an effect on me. It had an effect, so it's a noun, effect. That affected me. Now it's a verb, so it's a fact with an A. So you can just remember one's a verb, one's a noun. That will help you with that. I might um, move this. You, you can see it because I think some of these may have gotten cut off, and I'm sorry about that if that happened. Accept, 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 A, I accept, right? Accept, exception, we get the word from EX, accept that. I accept, accept, I take it, I receive it, or I agree to that, I accept that. I accept your apology, or whatever. They, hmm. All of those stuffed toys, I liked, except that one. Mm, didn't like that one. I liked all of them except that one. Mm. We went and we tried all this food and we went to the restaurant and, and I liked it all except for that. I didn't like that as much. Mm. Accept. 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 So hopefully you're doing a good job with those. Let's quickly move ahead. And try not to make these videos too long. Lie, lying, lay, have lain. Lie, lying, lay, have lain. Lay, laying, laid, have laid. Memorize these in order. Present tense, it's happening now, the ing form. Happened in the past, and if it has a have or has with it, you do that, which we call past participle that you'll learn later. You'll learn those terms later on, okay? So you do that and do a good job. Lay, laying laid in the past have laid this one's easier because this this is the same pretty much uh it stays more the same you just have to remember lay and laid uh two two different words and put an ing there this one lie lying lay have lain it's like three different really four really different forms of it and one can be confused with the present form of this, to put or place something, to rest and recline. Get that straight in your mind. I know, it's, it, it can be a difficulty. We'll keep practicing it. We're gonna practice it today for your assignment. Lie does not require an object, but lay does. She does not like to lay her purse on the floor. I know these are the same sentences we did before, but just wanna keep practicing them, right? Good examples here. It has, an, it has, let's see, lay has an object. Lay what? Purse. See? So that's one thing that you can tell with lay. You're putting or placing. It has an object that you're putting or placing. Dogs lay, right? 
The dogs lay their toys. The dogs lay what? Toys. See, it's something to, to put or place. Now, they don't necessarily have hands, but they might pick it up with their mouth and put it there, right? The fat cat likes to lie in the sun. You see that one? Like, there's no object, but it's resting or reclining, so we say lie. Yesterday, right? Yesterday, he lay. Yesterday, he lay down to sleep at 10 o'clock. It's in the past. So he's resting or reclining, but we say lay. You might say, but that's to put or place something. But it's the past tense of lie. And the past tense of lie is lay. So do those. Practice those. Keep practicing those. There's a few more examples. Don't leave dirty clothes lying. Notice the ing on that one. The boy had lain. Notice rest or recline when it's the past participle. If there's a have or has, it's lain. Have lain, has lain, resting or reclining. That's different. You may hardly hear that because people don't use it correctly. Um, you know, dog, lie down, right? Dog, lie down, not lay down. But a lot of people say that. And it's because of the past and present tense of the two words being the same. And so there could be confusion with that messing up on that. Now what I want to do also is review some of the rules that I have in this book. And you're going to have a, uh, an assignment today that is not in your book. Once again, I want you to take a piece of notebook paper and I want you to do this. I want you to write a paper using line lay it can be a story or it can just be sentences. Eight sentences, a sentence for each form. So there's, there's a sentence for each one of these. Lie, lying, lay, have or has lain. Lay, lain, laid, have laid, and use it correctly. Eight sentences. And in your, in your sentence, here's what I want you to do. I want you to use, as when you get to the end of a line, that top part, don't worry about. When you get to the end of the line, hyphenate it correctly based on the rules that we learned. And I'll explain this in a minute. In fact, I think it would be better to give you a better view of the book. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd just like to go over very briefly some of the rules. All right, look. When you hyphenate something in your writing, look, uh, never let a syllable of one letter stand alone. So about, don't do that. City, don't do that. It's a short word. It is two syllables, but just two, two letters there. Uh, try to make it three or more. Uh, make it three or more. One word syllable, all right, one syllable word, I should say, through, nay, don't divide, okay? Keep it together. Next, expectant, start with the consonant if you have to separate. So probably here, put a hyphen, go to the next line. Expect, put a hyphen there, and then tent can go to the next line. Relate, start your syllable with an L. And uh, so do that. You know, that only has two letters, so you would keep this together. But if you were separating syllables, uh, break it into syllables like in a dictionary, that is where you would separate it into syllables speaking it. Right? Two or more letters make one sound. They must not be divided. So stroy would stay together because it's all one syllable and one sound together. You wouldn't say stir oi. You know, you keep that to the part together, right? So you wouldn't say D-E-S-T-R -E and then put a hyphen O-Y. No, you'd keep that all together. It's one syllable and one sound. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you could separate there or you could separate it after the, the E, gentlemen. 
suffix. Okay, the ed here is all part of the same syllable, dropped, dropped. You wouldn't separate the ed, keep it all the same. If there's a double consonant, separate it between the double consonant. Forget. So put the second T, I, and G on the next line if there's a double consonant. Okay? If there isn't a double consonant, then you can separate it where the I and G would be. Does that make sense? Where the I and G would be. And yes, there is the word like pressing that I mentioned yesterday. But, um, you know, that's an exception because the root word already had two. Two consonants, right? So there, there they are. I'm going to post on Schoology this. You probably saw it. Uh, th this page that you can look on, look at to help you. And when you write this, see, write a paper using lie and lay correctly. So use lie, lying, lay, have lain, lay, lain, laid have or has laid, right? And those will be the eight sentences for each form of these words. And that will be your assignment. Instead of an assignment in your book, just have a piece of paper, piece of notebook paper. Now I know my holes right now, I'm on the back side of another piece of paper, but you, you, you'd start on the front side, the holes would be on the other side for you. When coming to the end of a line, hyphenate correctly. Look what I did. Hyphenate correctly. Hyphenate. So, anyway, make sure you hyphenate the word correctly. This is the root word. Hyphen. So, just an example there. And uh, there are times where maybe it would start with a vowel. Um, I, I know one of the rules was like expectant to start it with a consonant, but if it's a if it's a suffix at the end of a word like an ing, that obviously does start with a with a vowel. All right. If there's a if the root word can be there, you can put the suffix on the next line. Um, okay. I hope that helps you, and just write that today for your assignment. Rather than a page in your book, I want us to really practice. Um, we haven't done a writing assignment in a while, and so I would like us to be writing. Writing is really important to learn in composition, meaning composing your own writing. Okay, so this would help us learn lie and lay, but it also help us learn how to how to hyphenate correctly. You don't you don't just put a hyphen wherever you feel like it. So go back to the rules and uh, do it correctly the best you can uh, some of you it would help with writing your papers and i know you might you might mess up but at least try at least try and uh, when in doubt don't in other words you're not sure where to hyphenate it you just don't know go back and see if you can figure it out if you cannot figure it out and you just aren't sure then just go to the next line write the whole word on the next line you know it doesn't fit, don't try to squeeze it. Don't try to squeeze it. Just go to the next line and write the word and you'll be fine. So start here. Just write the write the next line if you weren't sure. And do that. Do a super job and you uh, you take care. So until next time, you keep working, you keep practicing. Be obedient to your parents and help them out the best you can during this time or to your brother or your sister. And you'll be looking for the next video.